Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Friday, December 11th, 2015. So it's a little later than I usually am because I'm not heading to work today. Nope, I am off. And I don't have my coffee yet because uh, I'm heading to breakfast. I, I had this trip planned for most of the week. I, I need to, if not longer actually, I needed to head down to Micro Center, which is uh, a fabulous place to get all sorts of computer gear and electronic gear. And it's one of my favorite places in the world to go. Uh, it sits about, it's a few miles away. It, it takes me probably about 15 minutes maybe to get down there to it. So I don't, I don't make it there all the time. Plus, at Christmas time, it tends to get nuts. But my in-laws need a new set of computer speakers, so I, I promised that I would, I would purchase those for them and bring them at Christmas and install them. And I had been looking on their site earlier, and I found these speakers that were like twenty-five bucks. And that look like they'll do good. They want one with a subwoofer because their old ones have a subwoofer. Um, and these seem like a, a decent. I, one of the things I liked about it is what they have. It's what they call a control pod, and it's this little thing that can sit on your desk. It's got an on-off switch, and it's got a volume there that controls the speakers, but it's separate from the speakers. Their current set has that, so I'm thinking, well, this one's got it too. I, I think that would be a good thing, and that way they don't have to be reaching where they have the speakers now. It's kind of like behind their monitor, so fiddling with a volume knob on the on the speaker is a little problematic. So I thought, yeah, I, I think that would be a good feature for them to retain. So I, at that point, they were like twenty five bucks, which I was comfortable with, and then uh, I checked Amazon, and they were like twenty seven. All of these prices are worth. I think it was, maybe it was twenty eight, because I think it was twenty seven ninety nine. So then today, I'm, I thought, well, I'll print off the model I want so I can make sure I can find it. Because sometimes something that's online that won't necessarily be out on the floor there. And I, I go and look at it, and, and it's 30 bucks. And I'm like, seriously? Oh, cool. The guy in front of me has got a Packers. Uh, another Packers owner. He's got a Packers license plate. P-A-C-K-3-R-5. Yay, Packers. I've got that exact same license plate frame that says, I own a piece of the pack. Anyway, I digress. So it's 30 bucks at Micro Center. I'm like, what the heck? It's feeling a little pricey. I'm surprised the price went up five bucks going into the Christmas season. And I probably looked last week, week and a half ago, something like that. So I thought, well, fine. Then I will go check out Amazon again. It dropped to 20 so I've already ordered the speakers on Amazon. They'll be here mid next week. And but I'm still going down there because I want Krispy Kremes. And I got a couple other minor two or three things that I could go to look for at, at Micro Center and I'll probably just kind of stroll around and take in all the techie goodness. So who knows what I might discover that I just have to have. Anyway, um, a couple weeks ago, uh, Scott Sigler did on this Friday Fix podcast, him and A Real Girl, they did a review, not really a review, eh, kind of a review, of this new sci-fi show called The Expanse. Uh, and They got, because they, apparently they know some of the producers over there, probably from some of their story pitching activities, they got the first four episodes to watch. Now this show doesn't start until like December 14th, but uh, they got a sneak peek. And actually, if you go on, on sci-fi.com now, that's S-Y-F-Y, in case you aren't up on the stupid spelling of this channel... they've got the first episode up for free. So I watched that yesterday. And you've got 
basically, is it three storylines? Maybe two storylines going. Um, you've got this. You've got this ship. So you basically got three factions out there. You've got what are called belters, and these are people that are working out on the asteroid belt. They're mining ice. And they've been out there so long that the physio- f- physiology is starting to change. So, you know, bones are being bred thinner and the muscles aren't as, as well developed because they're in, they're in lower gravity. And I, I guess I'm going to say there's, there's three stories, although we don't know what's about it. And then you've got um, this station called Ceres, which I think is like a moon of Saturn or something. But you got Ceres Station, uh, and and that is, um, you, you're following this, this detective that works there on the station, and they are, I believe, benefiting from the ice, and they're neutral, if I'm remembering the factions correctly. And then you've got, and I think that's where the, the the freighter ship that's mining ice, where the mining ship is located. And or is, that's her home base. And then you've got Earth and you've got Mars. And they're there, and so there's this very tense political standoff that's kind of going between the three factions, you know, the Belters and the Earth and Mars. And and in their prologue text, they say, it really only takes a small spark to set them all off. And so in the first episode, basically we see the spark being delivered. So on on the freighter, we've got... And I don't remember any of these characters' names because I'm horrible with names. And I've only seen one episode. But you've got this guy who is... He's having a love affair with the navigator. He's the second officer on this ship. And they are... They've collected their load of, of ice. And they're heading back to series station to offload. And for some reason, he really wants to get there. But then they have um, some sort of alert, and nobody can find the the XO, the first officer. And uh, as second officer, it, it was charged to him that go find, go find the XO. And so he looks in the most logical place. He looks in the XO stateroom, and there is the XO. And he's obviously, you know, he's he's got a bunch of potted plants, and he's. He's, he's dumped most of the dirt on the floor, and he's walking bare through foot to the dirt, and he's basically like got on his underwear and a robe. And uh, he's this older guy, and he's got a collection of guns there, and he's got one in his hand, and he's just talking about how there's not enough living here. They're out in the darkness. and He's obviously gone a little space, space crazy. Um, so, you know, he's remanded to medical. So this guy who's a second officer, now he's made first officer. Only he doesn't want to be. You know, he, he's happy, for some reason, he's happy doing his, he's happy doing his, his little job as second officer. Um, he, he, feel, he feels he gives him the emotional space to be able to do, have the dalliance with the navigator, which I guess is, is not really supposed to be happening. Um, but now that the first officer is incapacitated, the captain makes him the first, and, and he's resisting it. Um, this guy, this guy's kind of a complicated guy because yeah, he doesn't really want to do any, and he's a youngish guy. There, you know, I looked at the cast. There's really no known names in this that I've seen. Nobody that's... I mean, there are people that I might have seen in one or two... Things. Well, I take that back. There's one woman in it that I haven't... Whose character I haven't discussed yet. Who was in 24. Who was in one of the seasons of 24. Um, but I haven't, I haven't mentioned her yet. Uh, other than that, they're totally unknowns to me. Uh, they seem like a good, good cast. I like them. But it's just there's no... 
recognizable faces for me. Um, so there's stuff going on with this guy. There was a the trust call that came in. It would it would divert them two days uh, on their their way to, to Sirius Station. They lose their on time bonus. Blah blah blah. And the captain makes a decision. You know what? This sounds like a trap to me. We're just going to ignore it. And so, so they decide to ignore it. They wipe the fact that they've received the, tr- the, the distress signal from the logs. But then um, Mr. First Officer here, he's on duty by himself in the middle of the night, and he listens to the, to the distress signal again, and embedded in this automated message, he hears this woman's voice saying, Help me. And he forwards the distress signal on. He, he reports the distress signal to the governing body and that kind of forces their hand. Now they have to, since they've acknowledged the distress call, now they have to go and check it out. Only nobody knows who did it. So that's kind of, I won't go any deeper on that storyline because um, I don't want to spoil the ending of the of the first episode for you. But uh, let's just, I'll leave it where uh, the you know, the, the main ship gets fairly close, and then the first officer, the new first officer, and uh, a, a few other people, not including his navigator girlfriend, uh, are taking a shuttle over to investigate this freighter. So the second storyline is taking on Ceres. It's taking place at Ceres with this, with this detective. It's kind of got a little bit of a Blade Runner vibe in that it's a futuristic society, um, and you've got a detective, and he likes to wear um, a, a pretty cool hat. It's—I don't know what the—it's not like a trilby because it might be a trilby actually. It's not quite a fedora, so it's probably a trilby or something close to a trilby um, hat that he wears all the time. And people are always like, "What's with the hat?" And it, it just looks cool. He doesn't say that, but he says it keeps the rain off my head, which is one of the primary reasons I wear a hat. But it also looks cool. So it's kind of got a little bit of the Blade Runner vibe, but it's not as dark. Uh, there's, you know, there's obviously organized and um, sanctioned prostitution going on there, uh, but you're not really totally sure what, what what's um, what's happening, and and his his. He's got this. He's got this noob cop that is his his partner. That's like from Earth, and uh, so you've got a whole host of political tension there because most of the most of the Belters here don't like Earth, uh, the Earthers. And his his uh, captain lieutenant, his superior, gives him a missing persons case. And it's this woman that's the daughter of somebody who's somewhat important uh, slash rich, and she's gone missing. Now, the very opening scene, there's this there's this woman who's trapped in this in this compartment that looks like it's a. It's hard to tell if it's a cell or if it's like a little cargo department, and she manages to break her way out, and she she's on this ship. And it's, there's nobody around. At one point she gets spooked by a, um, by a suited figure that uh, apparently is dead because it just floats on by her. Uh, and then she sees something, you know, really strange in the engine room and she, and she screams and it's cut to the title sequence. This missing, he's given a, a little... A little phone light device with um, some video of this and some stats about this woman so we can try to find her. And I'm pretty sure it's that woman. And it doesn't take a whole lot to figure out that this that this ship-like thing that she's on, you know, could very well be the freighter that the other guys are are um, are, are going to investigate. 
So you got to wonder, you know, so, so there's a lot of unknowns there yet. Mainly you're learning about, I think mainly, you know, his point in this one is just to basically set up that he's searching for this woman and to just kind of give you a feel for what life's like on, on Sirius Station. And then the, the, the last um, plot element, which we didn't get very deep into at all, uh, has this woman that uh, she's, she's Iranian, um, and I don't remember her name. I know she's from, I looked her up. Because I wanted to make sure this was the woman. She had a very distinctive voice. And so I recognized her voice. She was on, she played this character named Dina on 24, one of the seasons of 24. I'm thinking somewhere around season six or seven or something like that. And she is somebody important in the Earth government. And she gets called to, a, to a, you know, she's got to go into work for a meeting. And the meeting is, is that they've captured a belter. And they've got him in an interrogation chamber. And, of course, his, his, his bones, uh, his body isn't handling the, the higher gravity on Earth. And uh, she's trying to get some answers from him and interrogate him. And he wasn't cooperating very much. So we don't really know everything that's going on there. She's, she's pumping in for information uh, about uh, what the Belters are doing. But we don't necessarily know what her plans are. We, we delve the, the, the least into that storyline. So that's The Expanse uh, basically set up. Uh, I'm looking... I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep watching it. This was such a setup episode. I don't think I totally got everything, everything about it. Um, but I, I want to see where the story is going. It looks interesting enough. Um, I'm going to say it's rated, you know, PG-13. There's one scene where the first officer and his girlfriend are having, you know, have just got done having sex in zero G and they're kind of floating there in, in not much clothing. And, um, and this is like the first scene you see him in. But other than that, it, it was, it was pretty family friendly, um, from other aspects, uh, there really wasn't, you know, primetime TV levels of swearing. Maybe I don't really remember any, but so there wasn't there wasn't a ton of that. Um, there was there was a scene with a, an arm that got cut off, but no worse than you'd see on uh, Star Wars. So, yeah, I'd say PG thirteen. I'm probably going to check it out. The other, the other show I'm looking forward to is coming on Sci-Fi that I think starts Monday that I've got set up to tape is Childhood's End, based on the book by Arthur C. Clarke. So, I've, that's like a, I think that's a mini-series running like Monday through Wednesday next week or something like that. So I've got that set up. Holy moly. So I will be watching that. I'll probably talk about that after the fact, because that is one of my favorite Arthur C. Clarke books uh, that I read when I was much, much, much younger. In fact, I'll probably end up uh, pausing the series I'm in. I'll probably finish the book I'm reading, and then when when that's done, I'm probably going to reread Childhoods, and I think I have it. I should have it in paperback, probably in a box in the basement. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm long today, and I'm almost a Krispy Kreme. Yay, Krispy Kreme. So, uh, I will be back tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow's LASIK day. Uh, I've got some things I, I need to do in the morning. So, uh, I will attempt to put out an episode. Otherwise, I'll be talking to you Monday. So, until then, be seeing you. <laughs>